If you're new to my channel, we take a look at camping gear, specifically generally vintage and antique camping gear. And I try to specialize in camping gear from the early to mid 20th century. And today, my friends, as you can see, I am strapped and ready to go. And today we're going to talk about the most important thing about hiking and backpacking, and that is knowing the weight of your gear. Now I'm on spring break. And when it comes time to spring break, that means at least one day, I'm gonna get outside and do something really cool. Mushrooms are supposedly popping up. There's deer sheds I could be looking for and you know, just enjoying some of the sunshine. And it just so happens there's two really good days here in Ohio that is coming up that I could utilize. And the temperature is gonna be pretty perfect. And this is my vision, this is my vision. This is step one, okay? Step one is you need to have a plan. You can't just like throw your stuff in a bag and go out. I mean, you could, you could, but you're probably not going to maximize the enjoyment that you have. So you got to have kind of a vision of what you want to do. Are you just going for a little hike? All right. Are you going to stop for lunch? Are you going to pack for lunch? Are you planning on cooking for lunch? Um, maybe you're going to do some bird watching. Maybe you're just wanting to lounge about. And that's, that's what I'm gonna do. See, this is my plan. I am going to hit the trail as soon as I drop my kids off to school and uh, go to this nice park that I'm really excited about. If you're in Ohio, Salt Fork State Park is one of my favorite parks to go to. There's lots of different hiking trails on there and they're really nice. There's some lakes and there's a couple of historic buildings out there. But anyhow, so that's where I'm going. I'm going to Salt Fork State Park and I'm gonna be looking for mushrooms if possible. I'm going to be looking for deer sheds, and I would like to eat lunch there and cook it on a camping stove. And, and if I have time, I want to take a nap. So this dictates what I want to take. And this isn't going to be an overnight thing. However, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try to prepare what I may want to take on an overnight because my boy and I, we're wanting to go on a 20 mile vintage backpacking trip. So I need to be aware of what my limitations are as far as my gear, personal limitations, et cetera. And this will give me the great opportunity to try it out, okay? So that's part two is, so you need to have a plan. Part two is you need to figure out uh, what gear you're going to take and its limitations, your limitations. And part three is just getting out there and experimenting. But if part one and part two doesn't go very well, then part three is not going to happen or it's not going to happen in the way you want. So those are the general ideas about what you want to do when you're getting ready to go camping. Now, I, first of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, but I also want to take the time and thank my patrons on Patreon. And, and if you like this stuff, then I urge you to check out the Camp Crafters Guild. It's in the description box below in case you forget, but it's really easy. You need to check it out, www.honorableoutfitters.com forward slash join the guild because we have a great community on there all about vintage and traditional camp crafting skills. And we're waiting for you to join us around the campfire. So uh, what's holding you back? Let me know below. All right, now, as you can see, I have a pack and I haven't shown this pack on the channel before. Um, and I, I got this pack because it is an original example of a Trapper Nelson style pack. Now Trapper Nelson packs, as you can see, they've got this nice frame on it. It has a bag that's not permanently attached. You can actually remove the bag, which means you can use the pack to carry other loads around camp. And that is pretty handy, let me tell you. Now, I have 32 pounds of gear in here. Now, why do I mention that? Well, two reasons. Vintage gear weighs more. So if you're more of a modern camper, then you know this is gonna weigh less and you probably have similar things that you're gonna pack inside. But that also means that I need to be aware of what my max limit is. A good rule of thumb is for packing your bag, you want it to be about 20% of your body weight. 20% of your body weight for a weekend camping trip. If it is a day trip, like a day pack, then really you want it to be about 15% of your body weight. I'm a big boy. So I'm about 230 pounds, I'm actually 229 point whatever, okay? And that means that if I do the 20% rule, 
then and I'm packing this basically for an overnight camp out. That means I have 45 pounds to play with. You might be thinking, well, that's a lot. And it is. And honestly, I really don't want to carry 45 pounds. More weight is going to be more uncomfortable. That means I'm not going to be able to go the distance that I want to go. That might even make it more of a struggle to actually put the pack on and off. So really, ideally, uh, I want to top out at about 30 pounds. Now, here's the thing about vintage gear. It does weigh more, which means I do have to give some leeway or I have to reduce something that I'm taking. Uh, modern gear, you can pack a lot of gear with 30 pounds, even, even just going to the dollar store and outfitting yourself out with cheaper alternatives. I'm gonna unload this to show you exactly what I have in here and kind of give you the story about what my plan is. All right, now here's the nice thing about the Trapper Nelson pack. I like how it has the frame down here. I can lift up and it has a little clasp down here I can undo. And it makes taking this thing off and putting it on so much easier. So this is, this is pretty cool. Now, uh, this pack has 32 pounds of it in it and I don't even really have any food. So there's more weight that has to be added. And as you can see, this is pretty much packed to its maximum capacity. So if I am going to take food, I'm probably gonna to have to take my haversack and put it in there. Um, so that, that kind of sucks. And the nice thing about frame packs is I can strap my food, that haversack or something on top or to the bottom, or I can get kind of creative with it. But let's take a look and I'll show you what I have. All right, now, whenever you pack your pack, it's always good to have your first aid kit right up front, easy to get to an emergency. We always have to take that in consideration, even if you don't plan on cutting your finger. But accidents happen, that's why we have this stuff. So this is my modern first aid kit, and it's in a, a uh, watertight container, and it floats, and it's pretty easy to open and close, which is really nice. Um, there you go, first aid kit, I know. I know, if it was vintage, I'd have it in like a tobacco tin or something, but you know, some things I just don't sacrifice. I got a towel here. I've got my silverware. This is my, uh, uh, let's see, this was my Spanish American War set of silverware, which is nice because it has the leather containers so for your knife and stuff and your fork doesn't poke through. Okay, now when we open this up, I love these style of buckles. I wish companies still use these buckles, but they don't. Um, my wood sleeping bag has them. This design was really popular in the 1940s and 1950s. Now this string is actually used to cinch everything together, but when it's packed to the brim, like this one is, that cinching aspect really doesn't work. Uh, this pack, is honestly really good for like a day pack, but for a weekend, maybe an overnighter, but for a weekend, no go. It's too small in volume. Right on top, I have my tent. Now this tent is, uh, are two shelter halves. This is my, I think it's 1910 shelter half system. So it has an open door and it has the flaps. It's made out of canvas. The canvas isn't super heavy, but it is still heavy. So if I were to take just a plastic tarp right there, that would eliminate a bunch of weight. Cause this is about five pounds in and of itself. And then I have my Civil War rubber blanket. Now, what's cool about the rubber blankets is they actually made these even into the early 1900s. Uh, Bannermans, of course, was selling them too, but they actually kept producing these into the early 1900s. It's not like everything was a surplus, but I like having the rubber blanket because I can actually throw this over me like an actual blanket, right? And because of the rubber, it helps keep in heat and it keeps out wind and cold. And that makes sense when I tell you my plan for my nap. And I have, this is my uh, coffee kit and my spice kit. So I have everything in here that I need to make my coffee and hot cocoa if I want that. This is something that's really cool. And uh, depending on when this comes out, there'll actually be a video about this. I'm not gonna open it up. But this is my new 
carbide lantern, which is really cool. And the nice thing about this is I can keep carbide in it, and carbide is surprisingly bright. I was really, really shocked. The first time I lit it, I wasn't too impressed. Like, ah. Eh. But then there's always, there's always some tweaking you gotta do. Well, just like this, this is a new pack to me. So there's some tweaking. And uh, the second time I lit it, whoo boy, like it reached like over 30 feet. I was surprised. I was really, really surprised. And it's lightweight, it's small, and uh, it is not a bad smell that comes from it, which is really cool. If you like white gas and stuff. It is less dangerous, at least in my opinion, it's less dangerous than carrying white gas or lamp oil or some other uh, historic type. Anyhow, carbide lantern, there we go. So it's pretty lightweight. I've got another video coming about that, or it might already be out, not sure. If it is, I'll put it at the end of the video so you can watch it. All right, I know, another modern piece of gear. This is my hammock because I, I could just sleep on the ground, but Man, when you only get out so many times and you really want to enjoy it, even I have to sacrifice some things. So if it wasn't going to be my hammock, it was going to be my air mattress, okay? I'm wanting a nice nap. The hammock is going to be fun and uh, give me the opportunity to try out using the, the tent across as my tarp, right, to keep bugs and snow and rain and anything else off of me, uh, maybe branches, nuts, things like that, because squirrels don't always like me, okay? And we take this out. This is another heavy item. This is my 1924 Primus camping stove, backpacking stove. Now, here's the thing about the Primus stove. This thing is large model. They made smaller models, but if I was going on a weekend camp out, which is what I'm trying to figure out, right, then this is the model I take because it has the volume already inside for the fuel. So I don't have to carry another bottle for it, okay? And stove wouldn't be very good without a cooking set. Now this is my steel cooking set. So steel is going to weigh more than aluminum. I'm taking my World War II steel cooking set because this thing, kerosene, actually burns hotter than uh, alcohol or other fuels, right? So if I use aluminum on this, then I have a higher chance of scorching my food. And I talk about this a lot. You always want to, you, know, you got to know what the limits are and everything of your, your items. So the steel cooking set right here is going to be able to cook food a lot more even. I don't have to worry about burning it so much. And it's easy to clean. You know, once it's seasoned on the frying pan, it's good to go. Okay, so that right there, that's about like, I don't know, like it's, it's heavy. And if you like this video, click like, because it'll help other people find it and it'll be doing them a favor and it helps this channel. So we really appreciate it. If you like this stuff, please click like. I have my five pound Civil War blanket. Now this is a large blanket. It's gonna be warm when I go and do my hike. Um, and it, this is honestly just trying to, you know, keep me cozy and comfortable, give me some padding, um, it's just, it's nice to have. Okay. So this is a five pound blanket. This is probably like seven, some pounds. This is like five pounds in itself, two pounds. This is, uh, I think two pounds. You get it. I got about 30 some pounds of gear in my pack here. And is there something else? I think there is something else in here. What else do we have? I might've just actually forgot. Ah, of course. How could I forget this? So I have a pen, which honestly, would be on my person. I have a piece of fat wood, just in case, you never know. Socks! You can't go hiking without an extra pair of socks. Okay, so this is my extra pair of socks that I'm taking with me, and uh, that is it. That's it, okay? Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, why do I need all this? Because with my, my plan, this is my plan, I halfway, I'm going to set up my hammock. I'm going to lay everything out there on my hammock, and then I'm going to have lunch. After I get done with my lunch and I do a little bit of my cleanup, then I'm going to take a nice little nap. And after I take my nice little nap, I'm going to continue on the trail and enjoy myself a little bit. Okay, here's what I found out. This is something that uh, jumped out at me. 
And those of us who are bigger, like me, six foot some and 200 some pounds, this pack, which was designed in the 1960s, well, not designed, but it was made in the 1960s or 70s, most likely. People were slightly smaller frame in general. Now, they did have big people, they had tall people, they had fat people, they had skinny people, they had short people, etc. But at the time, common size people, this would fit them just fine. This will fit my boy perfectly fine. He'll be able to use this. I, however, cannot use this for a long hike. I don't even really want to use this so much for a day hike. If I am going to go out and just pick something, and I'm not putting a lot of gear, but I'm like picking my mushrooms, throw it in here. Maybe squirrel hunting, because there's not a lot of weight with what you take when I go squirrel hunting. I'd put that in there. But this particular pack is too narrow for my size. I found out after putting it on, completely loaded. So I didn't think it was gonna bother me when it was empty. But after it's completely loaded, what I found out, it is pinching me right here. That sucks, okay? So I can't use this for my little hike. And this is the lesson that I'm trying to teach you and uh, pass it on and encourage you, even if you buy new gear, okay? Even when you try it on at your REI or Cabela's or whatever, it may not ultimately fit you once you put your weight in. When I put this on, I was like, oh, this is, this is actually pretty good. This isn't is too bad. I'll be able to do this. However, once I did my dry run, that's when I found out. So as soon as you buy your gear, load it up. Don't take any tags off. Load it up just like you would. Put it on and see how it feels. And that's your initial thought. And then just like walk around your neighborhood or something, okay? You don't have to go on like a mile hike or something, but walk around your neighborhood and see how it fits. Because at that point, you can know for sure whether or not this is gonna be a good pack. And if it's not a good pack, take it back to wherever you bought it from. That way you don't lose a lot of money. Especially vintage gear, it's made one size fits all. Your big box stores generally have one size fits all gear. When you get into the higher end stuff, then they have a lot more adjustments and things that you can do that fits just about everybody in a legitimate way. But when it comes to these things where there isn't really an adjustment, well, yeah, take it or leave it. So I'm really glad that I got this because this will fit my boy and it is vintage, it's a vintage style. And I think he'll learn a lot from it. I think we'll have fun with it. And uh, for a boy, as far as gear takedown, and because we will be sharing some things, uh, he'll be able to use this for the weekend. Won't be a problem at all. Like, we only need one stove. Like, I'll carry the stove, and maybe he'll carry, uh, you know, my mess kit or something. I don't know. But I'm so glad that I got this. However, I am also glad that I made my own custom framed Trapper Nelson style pack. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna put this and this and you can see how big of a difference it is. I made this first, okay? I made this one first and then I got this. And that is about two inches difference width. When I first got this here, I thought I made a mistake. I was like, oh man, if this is how it was really supposed to do. And they did sell them in a couple different sizes. To be clear, they, there was a couple different widths. Um, but when I got this, I was like, huh, maybe I made mine wrong. Maybe I didn't fit it quite right, et cetera. But after loading it down, I know I did it right. Now, if you are interested in learning how to make your own Trapper Nelson pack, like this, I mean, not the bag itself, but the actual pack frame. Uh, this is actually an old Boy Scout Yucca pack that uh, I went ahead and attached in the same style. But if you're interested in learning how to make that, I'm actually gonna put a course on the Traditional Camp Crafters Guild. So there's lots of things on the Traditional Camp Crafters Guild that are exclusive for those members. And it's just awesome. We, we're, we have a couple courses. We have bi-weekly round tables where we have industry leaders and experts come on and teach us something where we can have question and answer. We also have a book club, which is really cool. You don't have to be a part of all these different things, but we have these options and opportunities. 
but like we got a book club there at the end of the month we get together and we talk about the book and of course throughout the month we post things about it which is really fun we have monthly challenges which is cool and in general it's just a great repository of people sharing information showing what they have and uh, we also have a resource library so if you are learning and wanting to really dive deep into camp crafting then this is a great resource. We give you one-on-one -on -one instruction. We have the round tables to help support you. We have challenges to try to push you a little bit farther, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's a great opportunity. You can try it out five days, free. Won't ask for a credit card or anything. You can check it out. And if you don't like it, then that's okay. But at least you can say that you tried it, you looked around. So this is gonna be on there. Uh, I'm working on it this week and uh, we'll see how it goes. It's been something I've been wanting to do for a while now, and this is the finally the opportunity that I have to actually make a course and put it on there along with resources to help guide you, like the plans and things. It'll be fun. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I love to hear from you guys, and uh, let me know what you think. I appreciate it. If you would like to learn more about the Just Right lamp, and if I had already made it, then it'll be right here. If I didn't make the Just Right Lamp video and you're looking into mess kits, then check it out here. If you want to learn more about backpacking stoves and camping stoves, then check it out here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones, and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.